Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make carrot cake in the Instant Pot. So if you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. I know this seems like a lot when you see it listed like this, but it actually goes a lot faster and it's a lot easier than you might think. So don't be scared at all and give this one a try because it came out absolutely delicious. Now before we start adding our wet and dry ingredients and all that, we're going to go ahead and grate our carrots first so we can add this toward the last step of our cake. This is two carrots that I'm using, just whatever size it is that you have, and it's going to total about one and a quarter cups to one and a half cups of grated carrots. This is going to take no time at all. I mean, I know I have this speeding up, but it's really going to take no time at all. It's not that hard, and I would be baking this otherwise if it was. So let's start with this and then move on to our flour. I'm gonna go ahead and have my little sous chef help me out here, but we're gonna start off with one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. And we're gonna put it through the sifter and just kind of, you know, push it through that so it becomes a little bit more fine so we don't have any chunky bits when we're trying to mix everything together. If you don't have this, then you can be sure that you can get through all the chunky bits of it so you can make sure everything's smooth. Then go ahead and just skip the sifter part, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it just for the sake of this video and to have my little help me, helper help me out. Now we're just going to add the rest of our dry ingredients, the half a teaspoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, the half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and the half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and then we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of salt at the end of this, and then we're just going to mix all the dry ingredients together. So you guys know everything, there's four things listed here with half a teaspoon, and the only other difference would be the teaspoon, or actually the quarter teaspoon of salt, which makes this really easy to remember this recipe. Just remember, when you guys are using any kind of measuring spoon or cups with baking, you want it to be exact. So you're going to want to use like a butter knife or something to make sure that your spoons or your cups are leveled off and flat. So that we have the exact amount of whatever it is that we need so we don't overdo something or underdo something. Now with our second bowl, we're going to add our sugars with the rest of our wet ingredients. So I'm going to use my half a cup of brown sugar and half a cup of regular white sugar and of course I am using Splenda. You guys can use regular sugar because it's fine. You can use light sugar, the light brown sugar or just the dark brown sugar. Either or is fine. I went ahead and just used a light one as you can see here. Once my sugars are combined inside, well not combined, we don't need to mix anything yet, but we're just going to go ahead and start putting the rest of our wet ingredients in. Oh dear, I didn't know she did that. <laughs> we didn't taste any eggs and we're okay. <gasps> Oh my goodness, I see eggshells and I didn't even know it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I never tasted it, so I don't know. Somebody else may have and didn't say anything to me. I hope everything was okay, though. <laughs> oh, and this is the part where she also ditched me, so I ended up doing the rest of this on my own. Now, you can use canola oil or vegetable oil. I use canola oil in my dish. You guys can use whichever one it is that you have on hand. Here's the second egg that I ended up cracking. Maybe this is why she ditched me. I'm not sure. <laughs> but there's a second egg, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my teaspoon of vanilla. Ah, she did come back. She came back because she wanted to mix more. Maybe she didn't want me to see that eggshell. Hmm. But moving on, she did end up mixing the rest of our wet ingredients together. So we're going to move this into fast forward here, and then we're just going to start adding a little bit of our flour in there at a time. Now when I added my flour into it, I kind of did it in thirds. It doesn't have to be exact, it was just me just dumping in a little bit at a time just to make sure I got it fully mixed up and it's going to be wet all around so you guys will see what I'm doing and then you'll kind of get what I'm saying when I said thirds and it's really not that even. But as long as everything is nicely and well incorporated, it's fine. When you don't have any more flour left on the side of your bowl, you're done mixing. Now that you're done mixing, go ahead and add your grated carrots right into the same bowl. And then if you want to add raisins, this is optional. I think it helps with the texture of everything when you start eating it, but um, you would add a quarter cup of raisins right into this. And then all we're gonna do is gently fold everything together. I couldn't find my regular spatula, so I'm using a rice paddle. If you have that, it works, why not? Anything works, there's no rules, right? Except for measuring when you do baking. 
But again, gently fold all of this in together because you want to make sure the carrots and the raisins are nicely mixed up and combined and they're separated and well the raisins are at least separated from the rest of it so you don't have like a big chunk of it somewhere in the cake. And once we're done folding all of this together, all we have to do is put it right into our springform pan. Now you guys can use a regular cake pan if you would like to. Just make sure that you either flour it or oil your pan very well because we don't want to have anything sticking to the cake when we're trying to take it out. Now all that's left is us just scooping it right into whatever pan choice it is that you choose to use that'll fit right into your Instant Pot. Now if you guys are wondering, I am not going to be making any kind of cheesecake frosting for this carrot cake. I find carrot cake to be normally sweet with the raisins in there and I feel like the cream cheese frosting always takes away from the actual flavor of the carrot cake. So I like to eat it by itself. But if you guys want to make a whipped cream type of frosting thing to go with your carrot cake, I say go for it. I actually like my strawberry shortcake frosting for that, the whipped frosting for that. Oh, you guys will see. I can link it down below for you guys if you'd like as well. But. I think it's fantastic by itself. Everybody in the family loves it without anything else on top because I really do feel like it takes away from the cake itself, the flavor of it all. But once you're done, you go ahead and just smooth it out and then we're just gonna do our usual things that we need to do to get this ready to go right into our Instant Pot. And if you guys have been following me, then you guys know exactly what it is I'm gonna be doing next. For any new subbies, hi, welcome, and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to put a paper towel on top to help capture any moisture, and then I'm going to cover it with aluminum foil because we don't want it to get wet inside of our cake. We're going to put this all around the pan just to make sure it's nicely sealed and we don't get any water inside our cake to ruin it. Now for our second step, we are going to make the long sleeve to make our handles so that we can take this in and out of our Instant Pot easily. I am using a heavy duty aluminum foil and I'm going to be folding it in half and then I'm going to fold it into thirds. And you guys will see how it makes my handle when you center it on there and you can place it in and out of the Instant Pot without worrying about hurting yourself. Now moving along right into our Instant Pot. I did go ahead and add one cup of water right into the bottom of my pot and I'm moving it around so you guys can see the water in there already so it's not like I'm crazy or something because I know sometimes it could be harder to see. But we did add the rack. If you guys do not have a rack, go ahead and crumple up some aluminum foil. You're gonna wanna put at least four crumpled up aluminum foils and kind of flatten it out with your cake pan or whatever it is with your hand so that it stays steady on top of that. This way the steam can still rise around your cake and cook it at the same time. And you're just gonna push that seal back to the sealed and not to the venting side. And then we are going to pressure cook it for 35 minutes on high pressure. Thirty-five minutes later, all we have to do is release the steam and it only took like a minute or two to get that taken care of and then we'll be ready to open up the lid and bring it right out of the pot. Now carefully open your lid away from you so we are protected from the steam and then we are going to see those handles. Go ahead and grab something to grab those with because obviously that's going to be hot. I'm just going to be using these silicone mitts of mine and I'm going to hold that up and kind of shake it around a little bit just to have some of that steam water drip right off of the aluminum foil top. Now go ahead and carefully remove your top, your aluminum foil top and the napkin inside of there underneath. And then we're going to let this sit out and cool down for at least 30 minutes before we slice right into it. Now I like to use a springform pan just because it's an easier release and so it makes everything less sticky. I don't have to worry about cutting around the edges or trying to flip it over or take it out, you know? So I just find these to be easier, especially with the Instant Pot. Look at how clean the ring is. 
check that out. Pretty good, right? I feel like it's really great for this. Alright, so if you guys like this recipe and it helps you guys out in any way, shape, or form, please hit that subscribe button, like it, and share it. And until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook.